Now the Sharpe ratio is something that you could calculate yourself, but fortunately it's almost always provided by an ETF company. The Sharpe ratio itself takes the return of the stock in the numerator and it subtracts from that the risk-free rate. In other words, what is the rate of return that you could get on an investment, usually it's treasury bonds, where we assume that there's about as low of a risk as you could possibly get. So if we subtract that, then we get the actual return of this particular ETF or the adjusted return for that. In the denominator there, that symbol stands for standard deviation, or another way you could think about this is that that means volatility. And remember, volatility equals risk. So we're taking the adjusted return of this particular ETF and we're dividing into it its level of risk or its standard deviation. That's gonna give us our Sharpe ratio. Now what we're looking for is something that has a really small denominator compared to its numerator. So the higher that Sharpe ratio is, the better. So let's look at an example here. Now I've ranked all those ETFs that I put on the chart starting with IWM all the way through to our leader, PXMG. And as you can see, MDYG, which tracks a similar pool of stocks, turned out to be the winner over a 10 year period. So this is a 10 year Sharpe ratio, which is a more fair comparison. This kind of relative strength analysis is better when we're comparing peers. So that's why we use it in this situation. They're very similar ETFs or they are holding very similar assets. That's when we would want to apply this and we have to find that Sharpe ratio either through a search engine or it'll be disclosed at the ETF's website.